You want to a life transforming experience? As Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insights and power. God bless you. This evening, the focus is going to be more on an ingredient that um, a lot of leaders don't have. It's going to be on particular value of leadership that a lot of leaders have not taken time to develop over time. Because to God, what I will show you now is more important than skills, is more important than talent, is more important than ability. Yes, it is actually more important than that. And I found that God opposed this principle I'm going to show you now more than... Um, more than anything else. In fact, even Jesus is called this thing I want to show you now. He's addressed as it. He's addressed as it. And until a leader has it, there is little or nothing you'll be able to make as impact in your leadership work. Okay, let me first of all establish the fact that the biggest need and cry of society now is leadership. What is scarce this season is leadership. The absence of leadership is the reason why failure, problems, crisis exist. If you solve the leadership problem, then failure has been taken care of. Problems, sacrifice, what do you call it? Crisis has been solved. The scarcest commodity in society, it's not rice and beans, it's not yam, it's not water, it's not whatever. The scarcest commodity has always been leadership. Everything rises and falls on it. But in leadership, there's something that is more important to God and important to leaders than skills. Because, you know, when we talk about this leadership issue, a lot of people think it has to do with just skills. It has to do with developing talent. It has to do with developing potential. It's more than that. Two teams can be playing a match. One can be winning that match and the other one is losing. Check. The reason the other one is failing is not because it's not skillful. In most cases, it's because of this stuff. I've seen teams that are not skillful. They don't have abilities. They don't have talent. But they have an ingredient that when you put into motion, it doesn't matter how hard a city is. You can crack it. When two people, three people, come together, agreeing as to touching a thing, it shall be established. There is a fabric that holds organization together. There is a thread that keeps organization going. When everybody who is a member of the organization or a member of the team understands that thing and that thing bounds us together, I say, it doesn't matter. Give us Jupiter. We will take it. That's what God is in search of. He's not in search of men who have competence and eloquence. That's good, though. Eloquence is good. Competence is good. Skills is good. But take this other ingredient out. Your skills will render you even more useless. It's true. I've seen a lot of skillful leaders who cannot make impact. Skillful players, they can't make impact. I watched, I was privileged to watch France 98 when Zidane played. Played, played. Won all the, you know, best. He was, the last match, oh, he was about to receive trophy as the world best player, best captain, highest goal scorer, and all that. Just one stupid attitude cost him everything. Few minutes to the end of the game, the guy had just taken somebody's head and nodded it off. 
And of course, principals and respecters of nobody. The referee put hand in his pocket, just removed one small red card and sucked the guy out of the pitch. And glory was lost in just one minute. One minute to the end of the game, the guy lost the glory. Was he skillful? Why did his skill not help him that day? Why? Okay. This evening we'll be talking about faithfulness in leadership. Faithfulness in leadership. What is faithfulness? And why is it important in leadership? What is faithfulness? You can give me different definitions if I ask you now. What is faithfulness? Ability to be trusted. Ability to be dependable. Ability to be relied upon. Now we say, stay here. Even if I go to bed and wake up, I am sure you are still there. Faithfulness. Ability to be trusted. Ability to be committed to a task. Faithfulness. I um, came to find out that a skillful rebel or a teachable ignoramus is preferable than a skillful rebel. Mm. Put a man who has skills, put a man who has attitude, who has faithfulness. Give both of them time. The one who doesn't have skills but is faithful will beat the guy who has skills but not faithful. Faithfulness is an attitude of success. And if there's anything God checks, if he wants to bless a man, his faithfulness. God does not bless you because you pray more. You should get this thing now. Faith can move mountains, yes. The just shall live by faith. But faithfulness is the key for getting to the top of the mountain. It may take hard work to move mountain. It takes faithfulness to climb on top of the mountain. In fact, the one who climbs the mountain is even for me more skillful, more intelligent, even stronger than the one who can move the mountain. Because after moving the mountain, that same mountain can be an opposition to you tomorrow. If I want to pass that gate now and I move a mountain out of that gate, I just shift it towards um, that building, Hope High Secondary School. I just shift the gate there. What if tomorrow I want to enter Hope High? I think I will still need to go and push the mountain again. The just shall live by faith. Faith moves mountain. Faithfulness takes you on top of the mountain. When God wants to promote you, he does not test your faith. He tests your faithfulness. When God wants to bless a man, he does not check the volume of his prayer. He checks the volume of his faithfulness. Faithfulness in leadership. And that is the condiment and the ingredient that is lacking in today's world. In today's leadership experiment. People are not faithful. But they want to be blessed. When a thing committed into the trust of a leader dies in the hands of that leader, every other thing dies. True talk. Every other thing dies. When something committed in your trust dies, every other thing around you dies. It's a known truth. Maybe I should show you a few scriptures, then I can get into the body of this. Show me First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. Let me start with God Almighty. How does God describe himself? Faithful. Put it up. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. Let me show you. I, I, I told you initially that God describes himself as God. Okay, look at it. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. God is faithful. By whom we were called unto the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ our Lord God is 
So that means faithfulness can be the name of a person in this context. God is. So it can be the name of a person. Okay. So you want to add one of the names of God, faithful. You can say he's faithful. God is faithful. By whom we were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God values faithfulness to a point that faithfulness is his qualification. Deuteronomy. Let me show you another scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. Put it up fast. Show you a few tips. You know, give you a lot of scriptures too. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. The faithful God. Have you seen how this thing works now? trying to show you i want to lay a foundation because leaders who are struggling with faithfulness does not know that god (laughs) blesses on the parameter of faithfulness because that is who he is that's who he is god is faithful a man says not one word of mine will fall to the ground he said the heavens and the earth will pass but none of my word do you know from the time god created the heavens up to you now god's word has been constant one has not fallen what level of faithfulness is that? Not one word of, from God's word has fallen to the ground. Faithfulness. He says he is faithful. Okay, he that keepeth Israel neither sleeps nor slumber. Do you know he has not blinked his eyes? Faithful. He told Jeremiah, I am watching over my word to perform it. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. He is called faithful. Now look at it. The faithful God, which keepeth covenant. It takes faithfulness to keep something. You serve a living God, but it's also a faithful God. That's what the church does not know. I'm serving a living God. I am. He is a living God, but he is also a faithful God. And I want to say this to you and say it with every sincerity god is not committed to you until your faithfulness has been proven he is not he is not until god finds a man faithful he's not committed to you because he himself is faithful the faithful god which keepeth covenant and mercy with the with them that love him you see that? And keep his commandments to a thousand generations. <laughs> Did he say he's committed to people who are Christians, believers? He said, he said, the faithful God which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandment. So you see that there's a part God keeps. There's a part you keep. Is somebody hear what I'm saying this evening? Does it make sense to you? There's a part God is going to keep. There's a part you are going to keep. Both of them are keeping, you know. But check, God has his own part to keep. You have your own part to keep. So, a, a lot of Christians who cannot access the blessing, in spite of the volume of their prayer, doesn't know what God is checking is faithfulness in leadership, faithfulness in service, faithfulness in stewardship, faithfulness in something that has been committed into your hand god will not commit what you are asking him to commit into your hands until you are faithful with what he has already committed into your hands the blessings you're praying for the breakthrough you're praying for my friend those prayers are not necessary if you understand that there's something god already put in your hand what you need is just one little faithfulness on that thing the others will be added the others will come chasing you faithfulness faithfulness god is looking for a set of leaders he can trust god is looking for a body a generation of christians he can trust faithfulness is the key that's the key when god finds a man who is committed to him when god finds a man who is faithful a man who he can depend on there is nothing god will withhold from such a man i found out nothing Nothing. And I'll show you from scriptures. Do, do you know the Bible is just a summary of two kinds of people? One, 
people who were faithful and collected the promise and people who were unfaithful and lost the promise. The whole Bible. The whole of the Bible is just a story of people who enter the promise through faithfulness. Not through any other thing, not hard work, just faithfulness. Then, it's also a summary of people who lost the promise through unfaithfulness. QED. QED. Listen, hard work and labor has never made any man successful. Yes. That you work more, pray more, study more, and all that has never made any man succeeded. What takes people to the top? Faithfulness. 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 And I will show you. I'm going to demystify this equation very, very soon. So, follow me patiently. All right. Why not show me quickly? Why not show me uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 35? Let's look at a few things from the Bible. We're going to be searching the Bible so much to confirm if faithfulness actually plays out in the scripture. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 35. And I will raise me up a faithful priest. Look at it. In raising ministers, God looks for the first. The first thing God looks for is faithful, is faithfulness. And I will raise me. I will raise. That's God talking. Now, God wants a pastor. God wants to choose a leader now. God wants to elect somebody. He can put in charge of something. See the first thing he, he's saying. He's not saying he's skillful. I want to say this. You're a pastor. You're a leader. In appointing people, in bringing people up to positions of leadership, don't go for skills first. Skills without faithfulness will kill. It will kill. What you check, faithfulness. Because a teachable ignoramus, a faithful ignoramus, is better than a skillful rebel. The guy may know how to do the job. The guy may have the competence and the skill. If you cannot trust him, don't hire him. Because a lot of ministries that have gone down didn't go down because there were no skillful guys. They were guys with bad attitude. Wrong attitude. You can't trust them. They are on today. They are off tomorrow. They are in today. They are out tomorrow. And that's why you look at people like that. Yeah. Satan slays them. You see a lot of calamities in their life. You see, the devil has access to their finance. The devil has access to their health. He has access to everything. Why? They have not addressed unfaithfulness. I said, this is the biggest trust God is in search of. By the time I show you a few heroes in the Bible, you will be so shocked about it. I found out. This is the biggest thing. More than anointing, this is the thing. More than skills, I can do the job. This is the thing. Faithfulness is 80% leadership success. Skills is 20%. Skills. What you emphasize on skills, skills, competence, it's just 20% of the equation. The biggest bulk of the matter, 80% of it is faithfulness. 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 (laughs) What got the devil out of the way? What got him away from the kingdom of God? What was it? Oh, faithfulness. What else do you think killed him? What's the opposite of rebellion? Faithfulness. What got him out? Simple. Unfaithfulness. He wants the throne of his master. He wants to satisfy self at the expense of what he has been given to do. The territory he was asked to manage is not okay for him. He wants more. At the expense of the master. At the expense of the kingdom to satisfy self. So he came down. Okay. And I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in my heart, not the one in your own heart. See God, oh. King of kings, Lord of lords. See God. He said, and I will raise me up what? A faithful, not an intelligent, not a skillful, not a prayer warrior. He said, a faithful priest. 
priesthood begins with faithfulness. Leadership begins with faithfulness. God doesn't entrust something in your hand because you are intelligent or wise. He checks faithfulness. Okay. A- who shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind? In my heart, in my mind. What next? And I will build him a sure house. He ate all. And I will build who? The faithful guy. A sure house. And he shall walk before mine anointed forever. God is obligated to build houses for people who are faithful. Say, I will build him, not you. Your own job is just stay faithful. I will build you a sure house. And he shall walk before mine anointed forever. Forever. But what is the key? Can we check some more scriptures? Show me First Samuel 22, 14. Then Abimelech answered the king and said, And who is so faithful among all thy servants as David, which is the king's son, which is the king's son-in-law, and goeth at thy bidding, and is honorable in thy house? What's the requirement again? What is it there? He said, And who is so faithful among all thy servants? Not who is more skillful. Not who is more intelligent or eloquent. Who is more faithful? Among all thy servants, as David. Which is the king's son in law and goeth at the bidding. Not at his own command or bidding. At the bidding. And is honorable in thy house. By the time I start showing you the rewards of faithfulness, and the dangers of unfaithfulness or the you know the things that comes to unfaithfulness you understand the scriptures i'm reading to you right now a few scriptures i have for you this evening i'm just trusting god to give me time to expose all of them to you then you understand that god blesses god promotes god increases people on this thing god honors people that a man enjoys honor is tied to faithfulness that a man is entrusted with more resources is tied to faithfulness. It's nothing else. Faithfulness. Dependability. Uh, that God can find you trustworthy. He tells you sit down here. And when he goes 24 hours, comes back, he sees you. He tells you go there. And he knows you are going there, not going where you want. He tells you, keep watch over this thing. He is sure you can keep watch over it. I hear Christians say things like, eh, after all, we don't see God. Um, so, my own job is to please God. I'm not the pleaser of man. I tell them, you are a liar. If you cannot be faithful with men, you can't be faithful with God. Because actually, God institutes his authority in men with men god is here right now how should i show you he has a representative here so when god's representative speak when god's representative say a thing and you contradict and after all you're not god you are man talking and all that even if god appears literally you will not be faithful still you will not can you show me another scripture Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6. Let's look at it. There are many, many, many of them. We'll try to see them. Proverbs 20, verse 6. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but the faithful man who can find. Mm. Most men will proclaim everyone his own ambition, his own skills, his own agenda. say most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness (laughs) he said but a faithful man he didn't say but a rich man a competent man skillful man everything goes down to faithfulness but a faithful man who can find leadership begins at this level faithfulness but 
a faithful man who can find him. Proverbs 25 verse 13. Hear this one. As the cold of snow in the time of harvest, so is a faithful messenger to them that send him. For he refreshed the soul of his masters. He does not beat, he does not cause bitterness. He refreshes. Anytime the master sees him, there's something that bursts open in the man, and that thing that bursts open can cause that man to prosper. Is it as the cold of snow in the time of harvest? So is a faithful messenger. You can use steward, a faithful steward, a faithful pastor, a faithful HOD, a faithful worker. So is a faithful messenger to them that send him. For he refreshes the soul of his master. Matthew 24, verse 45. I'm giving you a lot of scriptures today, so when you go home, you can go. You won't say pastor was just talking from the head. You see from your Bible. That's why we are reading the Bible this much this evening. So you see it from the Bible, and you know that this thing we are talking about is not one theory or theology. It's scriptural. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord had made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season. Yes, the next verse. See it. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find what is the message too hard. Let's start it from the beginning. Let's read it together. Go to 45. Yes, read. One to go. Mm hmm. Who his Lord had made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Now, hear, hear this, hear this, hear this. He didn't say who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord will make. Hello? He said, whom his Lord had made. So you can't even be a ruler until you're faithful. He didn't say who is that faithful servant who his Lord will make. He said, who is then a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord had made ruler over his household, ruler over his empire, ruler over this business, ruler. Then he now said, blessed. Go down. See where the blessing comes. Because the first thing is that you have to be faithful. You have to be faithful. Faithful enough to receive the trust of your master. He has to put you in charge of his household. Then when he puts you in charge of his household, that's one. The man needs to come and find you doing something. That's where the blessing comes. It's not finding you faithful that they give you the portfolio. Then after giving you the portfolio, you become a useless guy on the job. He said, blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, what happens? Shall find so doing. When he cometh, he finds him at the center of the job. Finds him at the center of the tax. When he comes, he finds him carrying out his responsibility. He finds him doing what has been entrusted in his hand. He said, blessed. We are going to get back to that reward. The reward of faithfulness. Very, very soon. But you can see some of them already playing now before I even got there. He said, blessed is that servant. Whom his Lord, when he comes, shall find so doing. So, why are people, a lot of people complaining about, I'm not blessed. Nothing is working. Finances are low. Hardship everywhere. You know the simple truth? Unfaithfulness. Unfaithfulness destroys finances. It destroys the blessings. Unfaithfulness provokes the cause. Some of the places you're putting a lot of hard work is where you would have substituted for faithfulness. Just bring some little faithfulness. Hard work disappears. You see things just moving smoothly in your life. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. That Jesus was able to start a task from when he was born and finish it at 33 years. It required so much faithfulness. He is called king of kings. Faithfulness. Adam lost the whole earth on faithfulness. I will soon show you now. You see the whole Bible from Adam 
to Revelation, book of faithfulness. Book of faithful men. You read Hebrews chapter 11 from one down. You find out faithful. It's faithful men. Faithful men. Men who were faithful. If you know what unfaithfulness can do to a man and do to his generation, hey, you will not want to touch men with anything that deals with unfaith. You will not. You will not. Most of the men I've seen blessed are men without faith. They just have faithfulness. The ones who have faith are always trying to use their faith to get things done and all that. And the ones who are not struggling too much, they don't even pray so smartly. But they are dutiful, diligent, consistent. They are steadfast, trustworthy, dependable, reliable. Check them. They're the ones, it's like God just opens somewhere in heaven, one window, one secret window. And every time it's raining, things are happening, you know, blessings are flowing down and all that. Faithful men. Faithful men. Faithful men. This evening, after this meeting, you will be faithful. Yes, that's what you need. You be faithful. Can we look at a few more scriptures? First Corinthians chapter four, verse two. First Corinthians chapter four, verse two. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. How many times have I talked about faithfulness from the scripture? Have I not given you enough proof? Okay, I'll keep giving you more if you want. See requirement for stewardship, requirement for leadership. He didn't mention two, one. The first thing and the only thing required to be appointed, faithfulness. No skills. No qualification. Is a guy faithful? If the guy is faithful, he will go far. Everything he does not have now, skills, money, competence, knowledge, everything he does not have now, give him time. He will, he will get them all. Everything he doesn't have, he will get them all. There are a few persons in life I'm going to be showing you. A few names you may know in the course of the lesson. I'm going to be showing you the secret to those men's exploit. Okay, people like Dangote. Even people like Adenuga in the corporate world. Some of you just hear of their greatness today. There's a storyline, oh. There is a storyline. There is. <laughs> A certain man was giving money to build a particular house by his master. He said, build this house, make it well, furnish it, make sure you use the best furniture, the best roofing sheets, the best that, the best that, the best that. Guess what the man did? He collected the money. Unfaithfulness spirit in him made him bought inferior materials, inferior cement, inferior woods, inferior everything. And he was building. He was building. Building and pocketing money. You know, saving money. Spending money and all that. Built a very useless house. Built a rubbish house. Built something that anybody who sees. So when he finished building, he came to the master and gave him the key. He said, Master, I'm through with the building work you asked me to do. The master said, Powerful. What was the worth of the house? He said, Master, it's as you gave me. You gave me one billion. The worth of the house is one billion. He used one million and wasted. 900 million. You say, good. So you mean you have the best furniture? Yes. Inferior furniture. You mean you have the best roofing sheet? Yes. This old in this zinc just made the house useless, you know. When he was true, the master told him, well done. Hmm? You did a very powerful job. Thank you, thank you. But um, that house is your house. He said, you mean the house is my house? He said, yes, it's your house. I actually didn't tell you you were building your own house. I wanted it to be a surprise. So unfaithfulness makes you damage your own success. In the course of a lesson, I'll show you that God cannot even give you what is yours until he finds you faithful in another man's business. It makes you consciously, unconsciously, you damage your own success. You damage your own blessing. Because of unfaithfulness spirit. Yeah. Because, you know, for instance, priesting use is a global mandate. Those of you who are not faithful in dispensing your duties, don't know that you are denying yourself entering USA. You are denying yourself entering Canada. That's what you don't know. 
you deny yourself entering Brazil. So when pastor is around, you are like, yeah, up and doing. When he's not there, you sneak out. You go and do whatever you want to do. They give you a job to take care of. You can't account for it. You think it's pastor you're undoing. It is your own house you're building. Because what is going to pave the way for you to go up is faithfulness. You refuse to be faithful. Trust me. It's your own house you're building, not mine. And the Bible says, walk out the salvation with what? Fear now and trembling. It's personal. The ship is so big. It has little to take everybody up. But trust me, everybody in this ship is building his own place up. Nobody will build your own for you. Everybody in this boat is building his own place up. So, decide to be unfaithful. You forfeit your future. Think it's pastor you're doing it for. You think you're doing it for your leader. Think you're doing it for your HOD. You will fulfill the future. That was the attitude of that man. He lost the thing. He didn't know he was building his own house. Another one. Another scripture. It's an evening of scriptures. First Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7. 17 rather good for this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church you see sending people faithfulness for this cause I have sent you can't be sent now until you're faithful. You can't be sent to take nations until you're faithful. I have sent you. To, were there were no other preachers? There were other people now. See the way he, does, he said, My beloved son. And what? I'm faithful in the Lord who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ, Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. In every church. Look at it. He said, he shall bring you into remembrance of my ways. Not even his own ways. Of my ways. And a man gets so faithful to a man that he knows all the values of the man. He knows all the principles of the man. He knows all the likes of the man. He knows all the dislikes of the man. And he can even teach people. This is what pastor likes. This is what pastor doesn't like. This is what pastor will do now. This is what pastor will not do. What level of faithfulness is that? Another scripture. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. Collect enough of it and go and study on your own. That's what we are doing. Collect enough scripture this evening. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. Look at this one. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. Say, commit. See what God is telling me. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. The same. Don't commit to skillful rebels. Don't commit to people who can talk grammar. He said, the same. Commit thou to faithful men. Now, they will not be able to commit it. They will not be able to teach others also until they are faithful. What will make them be able to teach others is that first they are found faithful. He said to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Jesus wanted to find out if Peter loved him. See the simple thing he asked him. Peter, did you, do you love me? He said, yes, I love you. And he gave him a very simple task. He said, then feed my flock. Just feed the flock. Then you show me you love me. You see it, man? The same things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. Same. Commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So that your pastor teaches you a thing. Your pastor raises you up. Your pastor trains you. Your pastor disciples you. Faithfulness is going to show whether you will be able to pass the same thing on to others. 
For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.